I became ill in about April of 2017 and had numerous tests, but finally uh, I saw a specialist so that when he gave the diagnosis to my husband and myself, I was right, I'd cried my tears because I knew that the statistics for pancreatic cancer were not particularly good. Uh, my husband and I had only been married at this stage for a couple of years, after 30 years of being a widow, and we had so much to look forward to. And I had to have something to hold on to. I just wanted to keep it to myself until I felt the strength that I could face the world with it. I didn't want to burden my husband, I didn't want to burden my family with it, and it was frenetic for the first couple of months before then I think I realised that um, if I looked after myself I sort of could keep going for a bit longer and I wasn't going to die because I had too much to look forward to, I had too much to live for. The support of my family were absolutely crucial at this stage and also the support of my GP. And my GP made himself available that I could call him, um, I could ask him things, he would get the results of all of my tests, and I'm very grateful for the support I got from them. People are often, once diagnosed with a pancreatic cancer feel shocked, afraid, they're fearful of what the diagnosis means, they're fearful for their future, they're fearful of the treatments, they're fearful of becoming a burden on someone that they love. Um, and it can cause sadness, people can feel isolated and alone, um, they can feel angry about the diagnosis, so everyone's response is individual. And so people have gone from having a, perceiving themselves as healthy individuals to quite sick really quickly. So I think it's really about normalising a lot of their feelings and it's normal to experience the shock, the anger, the fear. Uh, to cope with the, with the diagnosis, I think some of the things that, that help is to break things down, take it one day at a time, not, look, not plan too far ahead, just do what we have to do with in, in that moment. Um, a lot of what happens after that, after that diagnosis is that the hospital system and doctors and medical appointments take over someone's life and diary, so it's important to keep focused on and have some pleasant things planned in that time but it's also uh, helping the person um, seek the right information, try and articulate the questions that they need to ask their medical team so they can make the best decisions for themselves going forward. I was continually feeling fatigued. I was feeling nauseous. Um, I was having problems with diarrhoea. I wasn't game to leave the house or anything like that. Um, it was just, it was, it was too much. I didn't know where to turn. I, I felt that each time I'd go to the specialist, you know, you were in for a short time, they were checking your symptoms, checking your test results, and that was it. And I got to the stage where I said to the specialist, I'm out, I want to give up. I just don't, I can't go on with this. And so he decided to have a that we could have a break. We could do three weeks on, one week off, which is what we're doing. But then the next three weeks, we'd have three weeks off. And it really made a difference to my mental state. It gave me a chance to really build up and become far more positive and be normal. I felt normal at that stage. You know, I, I, I could do things. And, and I think that was the thing that you really need. You, you need to talk to your specialist about how you're feeling. But there was things like, how do I cope with the diarrhoea? You know, is it something I'm eating? And so I found Pancare, which was a pancreatic cancer support group, and rang up and went to a meeting. My husband and I went to a, a support day for patients. And I found that was brilliant because they had a dietitian there, they had an exercise physiologist. It was speaking with the, the dietitian there and it was speaking with other um, pancreatic cancer people there. And we're able to sort of share personal experiences and absolutely invaluable. 
I think psychology's role is to help someone come to find their own meaning and interpretation of what their illness is and to help them identify the coping strategies that will help them through the, the diagnosis and help their family. With psychology works closely with nutrition and physiotherapy and exercise because it's really important if someone has if someone's mood's really low uh, and they're struggling with their mood and they're feeling depressed, they're not really going to feel like exercising or they're not really going to feel like eating. So we work together to develop a plan that we might use techniques such as cognitive behaviour therapy, which looks at the behaviours and thoughts that might be contributing to your low mood or to your fatigue or to your pain or exacerbating these symptoms and changing the way we think and feel helps people feel more motivated to follow through on some of the recommendations um, from, from the dietitian and the physiotherapist. We tailor all our in interventions to the person and their circumstances and no no person experiences their cancer diagnosis in exactly the same way and, and everyone's history is different. So people bring lots of different things into, into the session. So they might come and talk about their family and their worries about how their family's coping and, and struggles with what worrying and burdening their family and we'll work individually. Because psychological interventions work, and I think um, people think often when, when you experience depression or anxiety, it will just go away. But, the, but what we know is that it, it, symptoms persist and they can impact on your quality of life. It, it impacts on treatment adherence. It impacts on satisfaction with care. It impacts on levels of pain. And so seeking help from someone like me can help improve pain, fatigue, depression, anxiety. It can improve communication um, with loved ones. It can help people adjust and explain the cancer diagnosis and prognosis to their family and their loved one and can improve their overall quality of life. Most uh, hospitals have a psychology, social work or a psychiatry services, so people can access these services through their, their hospital. In the community, we have the, um, the, uh, the mental health plans through the GP, where the, men, where the GP develops a mental health plan and refers to a community psychologist or mental health worker, and patients are, are able to access 10 individual sessions with the psychologist as well as 10 group sessions uh, that are Medicare rebated. Uh, there are online um, phone counselling services through the Cancer Council, through Beyond Blue or Lifeline. There are, there's a Grief Line um, counselling service. I think the things that have just kept me so positive have been the love and support of my husband and my family. And you've got to think about what you do want to do in life. You know, before you got this diagnosis, what were you planning? What did you want to do? Well, because you've got the diagnosis, you don't have to stop that now. That's still, still hang on to it, still aim for it, still do it. Mm -hmm.